Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chad. You guys are watching Yeager Wrenching. And today we are discussing transmission and engine temperatures and why they run so hot. That's a relative term, but why people think they run hot on these newer F250s, 350s, 450s, even to the 550 chassis. Anything that's got a, you know, 6.7 diesel with a 6R140 transmission in it. So I'm curious to see what you guys think about it. I'm also gonna show and talk about two things that make these trucks better than most. You'll see other companies copying these two things in the future because they're so good so if we look at my truck right here we have key on engine off we can see my temperature is 82 degrees fahrenheit the truck hasn't been started that's just ambient temp if we look over here our outside temperature is 70 it just cooled down a bunch because it started raining as we can see so what is the temperature that this truck is allowed to run at according to ford let's get into it i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the tables pulled straight off this ecu this is 100 percent ford data inputted into this ecu if you guys don't know i, I personally tuned my own truck i want to show you guys what i've learned even from tuning this truck this is also going to help us see what ford's trying to do and where they're trying to keep the temperature because ultimately they have pre-engineered a spot to have the engine run at and the transmission run at and keep everything within normal operating temperatures so let's go ahead and jump into this table if you guys are unfamiliar this is my tough book that was a flash of lightning and this is hp tuners this is under the systems tab in hp tuners this is where you can see at the top systems then within systems tab we have a fans tab and an engine brake tab and we are on the fans tab and we are looking at desired engine coolant temperature and right there we can see 100 percent stock this truck is trying to keep the truck at a desired temperature of 221 degrees fahrenheit now some of you may be thinking wow 221 degrees fahrenheit that's really hot this truck is running extremely hot that is burning stuff up but actually it's not all these newer oils all these newer transmission fluids they're designed to run at a very high temperature now there's two things that we get from running oils at a hotter temperature like they are in this truck number one is going to be efficiency we just gain overall efficiency the engine you know with hotter temperatures temperatures tends to be more efficient that's just naturally the laws of physics and the way that they work they just like to be at a higher temperature better combustion the engine the oil is a little bit thinner we get a little better gas mileage out of it number two is going to be humidity keeping water and condensation out of these fluids is key into making them live longer and also just not ruin parts water can get in there and do bad things degrade things it's awful it's why diesel engines have a huge system just for getting humidity out of the crankcase of the engine because it will really start breaking oil down. That is why they tend to run them at a higher temperature. And now we're gonna get into how they can run these higher temperatures. One of the things I mentioned earlier, which I think is better than most, is their radiator setup. Now Ford uses a twin radiator setup. They have two big old radiators. And instead of having an air to water, or sorry, instead of having an air to air intercooler, they have an air to water intercooler and it is a lot more efficient. So this gives them a lot of flexibility and consistency power so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the radiator setups on here let's jump into it so if we look at the secondary radiator setup it has a fuel cooler on it the EGR cooler the transmission oil cooler it's got the charge air cooler on it and I think that's pretty much it so that radiator only has to worry about those things pretty simple pretty clean definitely helps because uh, both the transmission oil cooler and the charge air cooler have their own individual thermostats this helps with regulating them at their own temperature so they don't have to worry about each other I also also believe the radiator is one but it is kind of split into a portion where the charge air cooler gets half of it transmission gets two-thirds of the other half and then a third of that's devoted to the uh, fuel cooler I don't know the exact specs on that but we can see here what it all takes care of now moving on to the next cooler we have the primary cooling system that entails the oil cooler and basically coolant from the block so the only thing that this has to worry about is keeping the block itself at a reasonable temperature obviously the block houses the coolant and engine oil so it's kind of indicative that you'd want them to be in the same cooler and they also seem to run 
in any engine I've ever done over the years, very similar temp wise. On one that doesn't have a specific oil cooler like this, you can see about a 10 to 15 degree rise in oil temp over coolant temp. But in something like this with a shared cooling system, you tend to see something that has about a four to eight degree difference uh, or delta between the two. That also leads me into my second product, which I was talking about that I think is better, and that is a charged air cooler. We have an air to water charged air cooler versus an air to air. I think that is a superior product. If you look at the race car industry, the fastest cars typically have a really nice air to water setup because they just work so well and you can get a negative uh, on, I say negative, but it technically is a negative temperature over ambient. So if we're using air to air, we are reliant on ambient temperature versus something with an air to water setup. We could put ice in it and we can bring that temperature down for racing. That's a big deal. But in something like a truck like this, you can just see how much more compact the entire setup is versus, you know, an air to air. Now people say, oh, well, you got these hoses, you got this well, as far as compactness, it's not. But actually it is in a way because we have room to put it up front. The air to water radiator up front is thinner than the air to air intercooler, but we do have a little bit of, you know, a box to make up with that. So I think it's more efficient. Some may disagree, but overall, when you're trying to do something for a long haul, I think it definitely is the more efficient way to go. Let's look at just for fun, the engine coolant temperature versus fan speed versus ambient temperature so we can kind of see when it's kicking on and what it's doing so if we look right here guys you can see the fan algorithm for the temperature most people don't go outside this 125 degree ambient so typically you know on a hot day you're gonna see 100 degrees Fahrenheit you may see a little over that so you'd be between these two but most people towing are gonna be between 170 degrees and so if we kind of look at those two the fan doesn't really start trying to roll until about 216 degrees but from my experience this is where the fan will shut off about 214 degrees it won't kick on until it sees 221 so really none of this table is in play until it goes above 221 degrees coolant temp then it kicks on and you can see it's pretty aggressive at 43 to 45 percent depending on ambient temperature and then it'll really cool off really quickly you'll see it'll kick on you'll hear it It'll then zip really far back down here and it'll get to 214 degrees pretty quickly. Like I said, you don't see a lot of this area until you reach the actual 221 degrees. It won't ramp up or turn on essentially until it hits that point up there. So I hope that makes sense and you guys understand that. It's it's a little confusing because people are like, why wouldn't it come on? It's just the way that they have it. They have a high threshold that the fan needs to kick on at, which is 221, and then they have a low threshold, which is 214 basically is when it shuts back off again. So that way the engine stays within that range. But let's jump into the transmission side of things because I want to show you the temp at which they try and cool that off and I hope this will definitely make a little more sense you guys and make it not so hot and you know you'll understand why Ford is doing it so let's jump in again looking here this is another table versus ambient I just don't have it you know spread all the way down so this is ambient temperature um, there's nothing underneath this but we look here we have fan speed versus trans temp versus ambient temp again same layout but we can see at the top here, the transmission temperature can reach 246 degrees before the fan kicks on. Now that means if engine temp is below 221 degrees, that the fan will not kick on moving air through to cool the transmission until it is 246 degrees Fahrenheit. Now some may say that is really hot and that definitely is hot, absolutely. I would say that's hot enough to basically start frying a lot of stuff. But again, they have designed their fluid, their oil to withstand these temperatures and work very well in these temperatures. If they hadn't, they would adjust this and make it lower. But you can see they don't, they don't have a reason. They have good reason for doing what they're doing. They like the transmission to get up to that temperature and to work. Now, do they want it there all the time? No, but that's the point at which it will actually kick on because guess what? You're working it. And most of the time in these trucks, like I drive mine, I don't do a ton of towing with it. I do tow, but even though then I never got to a point where the fan actually kicked on because the radiators are so efficient just the airflow of driving down the highway and the thermostat opening so coolant could flow through it would cool the truck off enough like that naturally that the fan never had to come on to actually cool it down so 
you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm boiling this down to is these trucks have a very good, very, very good system on them. And that the fan is kind of that last hope, that last little bit to get it cooled off. But most of the time you don't even need it. They just work so well, you don't require it. And you can see it, which, you know, these, these temperatures are kicking in to do that. But let's take another look real quick at the transmission temp and see when they're really trying to cool it off. The fan gets set at 20% at 250 degrees, basically. 40% at 252 and then you know we go up three degrees above that 255 and it's at 60 and you know so on and so forth so they really think it's an issue with the tranny temp at 250 degrees they're like okay let's start cooling this off getting it back down a little bit you know it, it's definitely getting warm at 252 they're like let's double the input on the fan to cool it off even more and then from that point gets more and more so as the rain starts coming down a little bit more i want to end this video but i wanted to show you guys this is a very misunderstood topic that's pretty much it you guys saw there's the data there's facts proof verifiable evidence that the trucks are not overheating at least in ford's Size, and that's kind of where they're wanting their vehicles to run at or where they're saying it's acceptable I hope this video helps some of you guys out I hope you now understand that your truck's not overheating there is one last thing that I want to share with you and that is for you for those of you that have stayed and I'll show you on my truck that is the temperature that you can see on the actual gauge itself on my truck I'm gonna show you the reason you can see the temperature is because I have unlocked it with four scan and that allows me to see it 24 7 now on you trucks that don't have that unlocked that is going to be the only time you see it is when you're above 221 degrees i believe or maybe 218 it's, i think somewhere in there it'll actually pop the temperature up to let you know hey pay attention to this be wary of it because it may start getting really hot so you need to know and you need to be able to shut the truck off or do what you need to pull over to take care of it let's look at mine one more time you can see there it says 81 degrees. Your truck won't have anything above it. It'll just be the coolant bar until you get to the high enough temperature and then it'll kick on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps some of you out. My name is Chad again. You guys are watching Yeager Wrenching. As always, keep wrenching on your own cars. Keep kicking butt. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, feel free to hit that subscribe button. But it's time for you guys to get the heck out of here.